बिस्मिल्लाहमान रहीम हेलो एंड वेलकम टू रहमान डिजिटल प्रोडक्शन दिस इज लेक्चर नंबर फोर्टी ऑफ फिजिक्स फिफ्टी फिफ्टी फोर यस्टरडे वी डिस्कस इन ग्रेटर डिटेल द ट्रांसमिशन ऑफ प्रेशर इन द लिक्विड टुडे वी are going to see different examples of this concept and that is transmission of liquid in a uh, transmission in the liquid so ladies and gentlemen let us start the fun first of all we are applying the concept of hydraulic pressure hydraulic pressure system is given inside this hydraulic systems are different so we are taking different examples of these hydraulic system and in your book only it is given the name of these things but we are explaining it in greater detail ladies and gentlemen so pay, pay full attention to it well in the hydraulic press we are pressing something by applying a small force on the small piston and there is a large piston here as well ladies and gentlemen when we apply a force on this plunger this piston smaller piston can move up and down similarly this can also this larger piston can also move up and down so there is a ram which is used to press this piece this piece may be of anything that may be an iron that may be the case of the uh, ram of pages which we want to press there are cards which we can press for cutting purpose of uh, pages uh, we can use uh, this uh, hydraulic press so as we learned in the previous lecture that pressure can be transmitted through liquid also there is a pascal law when pressure is applied it will be the same at the same level so if we are applying a small force and pressing this this piston downward so pressure will be applied by uncompressible liquid here and this will go through to this piston second piston which is connected to the ram and when we press it you can see that it came down this is the figure number 1 and this is the figure number 2 in this case it came down and as a result this pressure large force will be applied on this ram and when they press this it will make it flat whatever you want to do uh, with this working piece so you can do it by here this is hydraulic fluid this is a plunger the area of this one is larger the area of this one is smaller and when we apply a smaller force it will produce a larger force on the ram and it will uh, press it down and when it is pressing it it will become this red shape will become flat because we applied a smaller force and as a result we got a larger force and that is totally thanks to pascal uh ladies and gentlemen that was the hydraulic press and 
when you remove this one thing more i want to say when you remove the force again this liquid will press will will find the space here and to fill this space that liquid will automatically go upward and this ram will go upward as well again when we are pressing it this will happen and again we are reducing the pressure so this will happen so i told you that this piston can move up and down inside this cylinder and that is what in the car hydraulic brake system we will also apply we will see the hydraulic brakes here this is the master cylinder we listen this term very frequently in the uh, whenever we come to deal with the cars there is a disc system and there is a hydraulic system hydraulic brake system one thing i should tell you that hydraulic brake system is more powerful than the disc brake system what actually is happening inside this this is a brake pedal which the driver is pushing whenever they want to stop the car there is a master cylinder in which there is a piston which is moving like this there is a hinge this is uh, connected with the spring when you press it this will move this piston forward and there is an oil which is called brake brake fluid and very technically we are listening this as a brake oil so this brake oil is moving inside this pipe and there are two small piston on each side which is connected to these brake pads so when pressure is applied here this pressure will go through this and there are two piston on each side of these uh, uh, discs so when they are pressing this red liquid will press this in the left direction and that will in the right direction as a result that brake pads will come into contact with the tire and due to the friction they will reduce the speed of the car when we release this brake pedal then it means the whole pro process will be reversed and this fluid will come back and the piston will also be uh, in its original place so it means that these contacts of brake pads will be broken with the tire and as a result we will not be able in this position to reduce the car again we saw the second application of the hydraulic systems the hydraulic system there is a hydraulic brakes in which through the liquid we can uh, transmit the uh, pressure to the disc on each side of the tire and as a result we can reduce the pressure there is a term ladies and gentlemen written in your book and that is called hydraulic car jack you might have seen the hydraulic car jack when you want to change the tire of a vehicle ladies and gentlemen there is a shift which can be pressed like this and when we press this we are actually pressing this cylinder there is an oil reservoir and that oil reservoir is giving oil to this particular portion 
and when when we apply a small force through this piston then the red liquid which is shown red one here then this liquid will transmit the force to the larger piston and when the larger pistons are pressed it means the larger force will be applied here we are applying a smaller force and here we will get a larger force so when this piston is moving up it means whatever is in this place whether it is car whether it is a truck or whether it is a uh, large uh, vehicle heavy vehicles so it can be uplifted through this car again we said that through the liquid we can transmit the pressure and as a result we will get force larger force acting on this and whatever is here it means we will left that with very easy so this shift can be pressed up and down so as a result this piston will also move up and down when we are pressing this shift downward it means that we are pressing this uh, uh, this uh, piston downward and when we are pressing it upward then it means that we are providing space to this liquid to come back to its original place this is also oil reservoir from that side and this is also oil reservoir from that side so through the pressure of our hand we can transmit it to the larger piston and we can do very important work the fourth one is the hydraulic car lift when you are washing the cars and when you are going even if you are going to do tuning of your motorcycle they are putting your motorcycle on a ramp and by pressing a small pedal by the foot like this they are lifting your motorcycle to be in level with the working position of that uh, person who is doing work car mechanic or motorcycle mechanic so they are putting this force here a small force is applied and a large force is produced because this is a small piston and this is a large piston so when small force is applied on it it is moving down and it will produce what it will produce a larger force and as a result very heavy car we can uplift through a very small force again this this is hydraulic system and they are lifting the car in all these hydraulic systems we saw that by uh, applying a very small force we can produce a very large force by Uh, increasing the area of the piston the area of application of the force is comparatively small to the area of the uh, producing force so this is large one and this is small one this is large one this is small one this is small one and this is large one so in all these things you are seeing that uh, Uh, pressure can be transmitted through liquid in different phenomena and as a result we can get a very useful work ladies and gentlemen now we are turning our folks for uh, our focus to measuring atmospheric pressure how we will measure the atmospheric pressure there are different devices available for it 
the most common devices which we are seeing in our science laboratories is the barometer so there are different devices in which there is simple mercury barometer and aneroid barometer we will discuss in greater detail these two because it is included in the cie exam so we will discuss it but before that let us uh, explain that what is barometer a device for measuring the pressure the atmospheric pressure is called barometer isobaric process isochoric process isohoric process adiabatic process these are all related to the thermodynamics so isobaric means when pressure is removed so bar mean pressure barometer mean measurement of pressure you have to remember this word that how can we uh, uh, measure the atmospheric so i told you a barometer is an instrument for measuring the atmospheric pressure and it is always depending on the height of the column of mercury which is 7760 mm so most often we are not using the pascal as the unit for atmospheric pressure but instead of that we are using that the atmospheric pressure is 7 uh 60 760 mm of hg ladies and gentlemen hg is a chemical symbol for mercury so the column at the atmospheric pressure is 760 mm uh how we are knowing that this is a 760 mm our next topic is that i told you that the devices which are used for measuring the pressure is called barometer there are two types of barometer commonly used in our laboratories the first one is simple mercury barometer simple mercury barometer are dis, uh, we will discuss that in today's lecture tomorrow we will give a look to the aneroid barometer okay simple barometer consist of a thick walled glass of about 1 meter in length there is a tub in which we are putting is mercury remember that the density of mercury is 13.6 into 10 raised to the power 3 km uh, kilogram per meter cube remember that if we want to find the height of this 760 then we are using a formula in which there must be h involved so here we are having a formula pressure in liquid remember not solid not in the gases pressure in the liquid is rho which is density g which is gravitational force and h is the height you must have to keep in mind that 
rho and I should write here Hg as a subscript that Hg is equal to 1.013 into 10 raised to the power 5 Pascal. Ladies and gentlemen, from this formula we can get this one. We are making H as a subject and then we are making these two terms which is rho and g when it is going to the next side it will be in the denominator position. Now we have to put this these values inside pressure at point B and then we are putting the value of G which is 9.81 to be very much precise and rho I told you that that is 13.6 that is the density of pressure is this one not of the Hg so a rho of Hg is 13.6 into 10 that is one atmospheric pressure that is one atmospheric pressure so ladies and gentlemen pressure at B is this we are putting values when we calculate it with the help of the calculator so 0 0.7760 meter uh, will be the answer and if we are converting it to millimeter then it will be 760 millimeter that is why we are saying that what one atmospheric pressure is equal to 760 millimeter of Hg that is mercury. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a pressure of air at the top of this container in which there is Hg. There is a vacuum and this cylinder like thing which is a tube in which mercury is there on one side it is sealed and the second thing you have to keep in mind that at the upward portion there is a vacuum vacuum means that there is no air so no pressure will be applied from this side of the if there was a pressure at the upward portion then they will cancel the effect of each other and as a result we won't be able to find the pressure. So when we are reducing the pressure it means that this level will go upward and this will come downward. So at the top of the mountains for example if we are going to Himalayas there will be a reduced pressure when the pressure is reduced the mercury column will also be reduced and as a result we can find the pressure inside the high mountain that will be less when this outside pressure is less it means that the mercury level will go up when in this container the mer in this tub the mercury is going upward because pressure is less so it means this will come down and the mercury level will come down means that it will measure a reduced pressure through this meter rule there is a meter rule with it which is showing you the pressure level so with this this is one meter rule because I told you that the height of this thick wall glass tube is almost about one meter 
so if it is a 1 meter then if you are going to the low pressure areas i told you for example to the himalayas then this mercury level will come down and as a result we will note on this graduated meter rule the pressure so this is a simple mercury barometer in which we are using the concept of this uh, pressure okay if you are going to the high pressure areas where there is the pressure is high then it means that this air pressure at that point will press more liquid downward inside this tub and as a result the mercury level will go up and from this graduated meter rule we will find what we will find the uh, uh, we will find the uh, a pressure of this barometer i told you that mostly in practical problem we are using 760 millimeter of the mercury in the level uh, instead of this uh, there is a one paragraph of the book which i want to read as it is it must be noted that the vertical height of the mercury is dependent only on the pressure outside the tube it doesn't depend on the tilt of the uh, of the column so if you are tilting this column for example this tube is like this this tube is like this so again it will be here so it means that it doesn't depend on the tail of this tube if you are tilting more to it so it means that it will fill down the whole of the mercury level <coughs> but the pressure will be shown correctly to you so this paragraph is telling you that it must be noted that the vertical height of the mercury is dependent only on the pressure outside the tube it does not depend on the tilt of the column uh, the figure which i made it roughly here shows that the barometer being tilted but vertical height of the mercury column remains unaffected of course if the tube is lowered below 760 meter the mercury will completely fill the tube as shown in the figure in this third portion i told you that it will be completely filled there is a work example ladies and gentlemen but because we are running out of time so i am leaving it for tomorrow that is very important as far as the cie exam is concerned and i am sure this type of question is always coming in the exam so we will discuss that work example which is on page number 106 and then we will use android barometer which is optional optional doesn't mean that you don't have to study might be there is a question coming in it from from it in the paper one so we will study that thank you very much for watching allah hafiz